So in this video today, we're going to take a look at installing CloudBees CDRO in Kubernetes. So a quick look at kind of the architecture here. So pretty much everything we're going to do is going to be within this one namespace. We've got all the DevOps insights, the Zookeeper cluster, the server, the web instance, the repository. All of that's going to be in this one namespace, except we're going to use a database, which we can actually install in the same namespace as well. But you'll often have that externally. And then the ingress controller, we're also going to just use that in the same namespace with the default install just to make it easy. But oftentimes you will find that you'll want to do that separately as well. So before we get started, we've got this nice Kubernetes cluster and storage requirements page, which you want to go through when you're doing this for real. And it'll have information depending on if it's a non-production environment or a production environment. And you'll see there's just details on what each sort of pod is going to require in terms of CPU and memory. And you've even got this scaled out to very large deployments. Now, one thing that's going to make this a bit different from many tools you'll install is that we actually require a read write many instance for a few of the different services. So that means you're going to need some sort of NFS like service. Now, oftentimes we'll use something like EFS. I'm going to be doing this install in Google Cloud, so I'm going to use their file store. And we actually have down below guides for setting this up for several of the cloud platforms and OpenShift. And if you go into this CloudBees examples repo, We've got setup guides for a lot of this stuff. So you'll see there's this storage directory. And so we could go through. I'm going to keep this pretty high level for this video. I don't want to go into the weeds on any particular cloud provider. But suffice to say that you'll need some sort of shared file store. OK, so now let's get into the install. First, we're going to need a Kubernetes cluster. So again, I'm in Google Cloud, so I'm going to use GKE. And we'll just blow through this real quick. Let's call this Helm install. And keep it simple. It'll be a zonal cluster, US East 1B. I'll set this up to support auto scaling and go okay, from zero to three nodes. That's fine. Again, this will depend on your use case. Oftentimes you'll use more than just this one application here. And we go to nodes. I'm going to choose this N2 generation and use the machine type of N2 standard four, just so we have a decent amount of memory and CPU available. And the rest of this we can kind of blow through. So networking, security, all that stuff should be fine as the default. Ideally, you'll want to set up maintenance policies and all that good stuff. The last thing you need to care about here is enabling this file store CSI driver. This is because I'm going to be using the Google Cloud file store. So each of the cloud providers will have something slightly different for this, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. So as you can see, the cluster is now up and running. So if I go to connect, grab my connection string, paste that into my terminal. Now if I do keep control, get nodes, there we go. You can see I've got three nodes up and running. All right, so we're good on that front. Now, if we go back to the install, if we follow along with the install guide, the next thing we're going to need to do is prepare our database. So we do have the option to use a built-in MariaDB instance, but that's not really recommended. So we've got multiple different types of databases you can use. You can use MySQL, you can use Postgres, Oracle, MS SQL. I'm going to choose Postgres because it's free and it's easy to use. So I'm going to go to this Bitnami Helm chart. So now what I'll do is I will grab this. Let's change that my repo to Bidnami and repo update. And so that's going to pull all the latest repos or the charts in the repo. And as you can see, we can do Helm install my release, my repo Postgres. So that's all good. But what I'm actually going to want to do, if you don't use Helm all that often, one thing that you'll find quite valuable is using this Helm inspect command. So we can do is Helm inspect values, and then you're going to pass in the name of the repo, so Bitnami, and then the chart, which was what, in this case, just Postgres, or no, Postgres SQL. Okay, and so we can do that, and it'll dump out the entire values.yaml file. We can pipe into a just a local file, which we'll call postgres.yaml. Did, and I'm going to open that up, and what I can do is just find the parameters that I want to set. Everything else I can leave as the default. So I'm going to go down to this auth section, and what I'm going to want to do is just set a username. So use the username of flow. I can go down to the database. We'll also set that as flow. Now flow is actually the old name of the product, but you'll see that the default database string is still set to flow. So if you see that, that's why we're just going to set some random. This is not secure. Don't use this. Okay. So that's all good. And then I think pretty much everything else we can leave as the default. Again, if you're doing this for production use, you're going to actually want to go through here and find like maybe you want to disable the admin user, things like that. I'm going to go ahead and just keep this as it is. And I'm going to do is Helm install. 
and we're gonna give it the name of the release. So I'm gonna call this Postgres, and then we're gonna pass in the chart. So in this case, bitnami slash PostgreSQL. I'm gonna pass in the file, which is gonna be postgres.yaml, and I'm gonna pass in the namespace, which I'm gonna use as just CloudBees. We're gonna do this in the same namespace as our CDRO install. And I'm gonna pass in dash dash create dash namespace. So it'll create the namespace before it installs it. So run this, and as you can see, this has successfully ran the Helm install. What I can do now is another tool that is super handy is K9S. If you've never seen this before, this allows you to get a terminal UI to actually see all of your pods and all of your different resources and interact with them. So I can say pods, but if I want to filter it down to a particular namespace, I can go to NS or namespace, go to CloudBees, and now I can see that Postgres is running. And if I hit L, I can go in there and see the logs. So that all looks good. A secret as well, it's gonna have all of our super secure info here. So now we should be ready to go. One thing we need to verify, go back here, is I'm gonna look at the storage class. And I wanna make sure that I have one that is read write many, which we've got that in several different places here. So I'm just gonna use this standard read write many, which as you can see is pointed at this file store. Now, all of these were predefined. As you can see, it was instantiated at the same time that the cluster was. If you're using something like the NFS server provisioner or one of those other projects that allows you to provision it separately, you'll need to manually create your storage class. Next up, we'll go to the install guide. And what we're gonna need to do is just copy this in. This is going to add the CloudBees repository. Excellent. So now we can do the same thing and say Helm inspect values, CloudBees, and then CloudBees flow. Again, we're gonna see that old name, but I'll just call this cd.yaml. Now, if we open that up, we're gonna have all of our configuration options. So there are many things you wanna change here, like the host. I'm gonna set this to be cd.kubernetes.cbdemos.io. This is just a domain that we have. You're gonna see there's gonna be some annotations that'll be added to the ingress. And this is gonna be important. You don't wanna skip these because this is going to ensure that the actual ingress into your instance is gonna work properly. Additional configurations, depending on what your ingress is, if you're using EKS, ALB specifically, you might wanna change these things. You're gonna notice we're gonna use the ingress class of flow ingress. This is because we're going to actually be spinning up our own ingress controller within the application or within this Helm chart. But the rest of this should be fine as the defaults. Some of these values you may wanna scale up if you're gonna be using heavier usage, you can set up auto scaling if you think you're gonna have use cases for that, but you'll find that most of this is a pretty sane default. And you'll find that each of the sort of components here, as you can see the repository, they'll each have their own section that has information. So if I wanna go down to Zookeeper, you can see that I've got all of that relevant info on one spot here, but here's where we need to go next, is the ingress configuration. So you'll find that we actually have two different ingress options here. This is because there were two different versions of the Nginx ingress controller over the years. So uh, this first one is gonna be defaulted to false. This is the older one. And so we don't need that. I'm gonna just delete it so I can just ignore it. You can keep it there because it's set to false. It's not gonna be instantiated. But you can see here we're using the newer one, which is by default enabled. And I can just leave these things as configured. One thing you're gonna see is it's gonna have this TCP block defined. And so traditionally an ingress is just gonna have AD and 443. In this case, we're gonna also open up a few extra ports to enable communication with these different API servers. And if you want to open up Elasticsearch so you can dump data in there directly, you can also open those up. This GitOps section is what enables you to do source code sync. We'll come back and do another video on that in the future. So I'm gonna open up a new terminal session here and we'll take a look at what the name of our database was. So if we go to pods, look at the Postgres, and actually I wanna look at the service. So we've got this Postgres, PostgreSQL. First, I need to uncomment this. And so this will be Postgres, PostgreSQL, and then as you can see, dot namespace, we'll do dot cloudbees. I could actually just, because this will be in the same namespace, I could actually skip that part. Let me just double check that that's correct. Postgres, PostgreSQL, yep. And it looks like I've got this in the wrong tab level, so indent that one. So the DB name, I'm gonna to set to flow. DB user is also gonna be flow. And DB password, what did we set that to? That was 
This is not secure. Don't do this. Perfect. Okay. And then Postgres is 5432. And then DB type, we need to pass in PostgreSQL. And then I'm going to disable the MySQL connector because we're not using that. Okay. So this all looks good. All right. So there's one last thing I need to change here, which is going to be in the storage section. I actually need to give it the storage class, which if I go back over here and I go to storage class, you can see that we wanted the standard read, write X. So anywhere that has this read, write many, I'm just going to grab that. And so anywhere that has read, write many, which is actually just that one spot it looks like. So with that change in place, it should be good to go. So now what I can do is Helm install. We're going to call it just CDRO. We'll do cloudbees, cloudbees flow. We'll do the passing in the file. So cd.yaml. We're going to put it in the namespace cloudbees. And then we're going to tell it we have a timeout, 10,000 seconds. All right. So now if I kick that off, we're going to see that it's just going to sit here and wait, which is expected. So if I switch back over to K9S, I'm going to see these pods start to spin up. So we're going to see like the ingress controller is going to start running first, and then all the rest of this is going to start kicking off over time. So you're going to see most of these are grouped by this flow dash name. So flow dash DevOps insights, flow dash repository, flow dash server and server init job. And the server init job is the one I was mentioning. That's going to take a little while. It's what's going to talk to the database and ensure that everything is properly installed. This whole process takes, I don't know, possibly five, 10, 15 minutes, depending on what your environment looks like. We'll just let it run. All right. So we can see that everything is now installed. If I go up to the server, everything should be up and running. So now there's one last thing I need to do before I can access this, which is to go to the service. We can see we've got the ingress controller and we've got this external IP, which is connected to a load balancer in Google Cloud. So I need to copy that and I'll create a new DNS record. So I'm going to set this up, just a, an A record. It's pointing at that IP address. So we'll create this. Okay. So now we just need to wait for this DNS to resolve. So if I go to eddies.cdemos.io, you can see it's now loading. Let's go back to the pods. Actually, we need to go to the secrets and we'll see that there's this CDRO CloudBees flow credentials. Now, if I open that up, here's going to be my admin password. I can paste that in, not save it, never save it. And here we go. It is now installed. Now it's going to complain about me not having a database or a license. And so what I'll need to do is go to configurations, CD license, and I'll be able to import my license. And so then you just import your license, but I'm not going to worry about that because we've accomplished our job. We've got everything all set up. Everything's all good to go. As you can see, really the install of the application itself was rather simple. It's just kind of the ancillary stuff, like setting up the file store and getting the cluster up was where you need to spend a little bit of time. But beyond that, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward install. Helm makes it really quite simple. All right. And with that, I think we're at a good stopping point.